everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I thought that I would sit down and chat with you about some of the things that I've made this summer, as well as some of the things that I have on my to make list. So this video is a little bit delayed. Normally I would film this at the start of the season and talk you through what my sewing plans are and everything that I'm planning on making, um, but I've had a bit of a busy summer in a very good way. If you watched my previous video where I did a tour of my sewing room and home office, then you might have heard me say that I'm currently taking a pattern making course. So that's really exciting and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, making patterns is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, not just for myself, but also to sell. Just quickly, if you're interested, the pattern making course that I'm taking is with a woman named Victoria who runs Urbaccia Pattern Making Studio. Um, so she has some independent patterns of her own for sale, um, but she also teaches pattern making as well as size inclusive grading. So the program that I'm in is three months long Long. I'm just starting my last month now, um, so I'm about two-thirds of the way through, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Victoria is amazing, she's so knowledgeable, and for so long I was struggling to find a way forward when it came to pattern making, and especially grading, because grading a full size range, and especially an inclusive size range, um, was a very intimidating concept and there's not a ton of information out there if you're trying to do it on your own um, in terms of how to do that, at least not that I could find. Um, so I was kind of trying to make sense of, you know, some pattern making books, any online resources and like YouTube tutorials that I could find. And so I'm so happy that I came across Victoria's program. Um, it's exactly what I needed and I've gotten so much value out of it so far. So if you are someone who's interested in learning pattern making and grading, then I would definitely check out her course and I'll link all the details in the description box below. So anyway, that's something that I have been working really hard at and that's where a lot of my spare time and energy has been focused for the last couple months. Um, but that said, I have managed to make a couple of things from my summer sewing list. So I thought I would share those with you today and then also tell you what else I'm planning to make for the season. So let's get started. So the first thing that I've made for summer is actually the top that I'm wearing right now. And this is one of my own designs. So this is the first pattern that I have drafted myself. So it's just a very simple boxy top with a crew neck. Um, and a short sleeve which is kind of attached to the bodice um, and this is one that I am planning on grading out and selling. I know that there's quite a few boxy top options out there to choose from but um, I just wanted to make something that kind of had my own spin on it and all the little details that I prefer. So yeah just a very relaxed fit kind of boxy easy top um, and it has a short sleeve length as well as a long sleeve attachment option and then two length for the bodices like more of a cropped version which is the one that I'm wearing now and then kind of a longer tunic length version. Um, so this pattern isn't really um, fully ready yet. I've got a couple tweaks to make. This is kind of more of a test muslin but I made this in a remnant of some washed linen and black that I just had sitting around in my stash. So. Um, yeah, this isn't the final pattern as it would be released when it's finished, um, but it's pretty close and actually um, even though this is just technically a twill, I've still been getting a lot of wear out of it this summer. It's super light, super comfortable, very airy, which helps when the temperatures have been like they have recently and you don't have air conditioning. So yeah, that is make number one. And if you're interested in seeing more of the patterns that I end up making and releasing, then definitely subscribe to my channel here and also follow me on Instagram um, because that's probably the best way to kind of stay up to date on where I'm at with everything and be notified of when they actually release. It's gonna be a little bit of time um, before that happens. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, so yeah, don't hold your breath. <laughs> it is coming eventually and I'm really excited about it. So the next thing that I wanted to show you was this collage gather top from Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. Um, this pattern has really been making the rounds on Instagram and I just had to partake. I couldn't um, resist this one. It's just so cute. And what really drove me to make this pattern was actually when I was looking for fabrics for some of my summer projects online, I came across um, this gingham linen in this kind of orange and lilac color, and then also this lilac linen, um, the solid one. 
and I just thought it would be so cool to make something that incorporated both of these because they seem to match so well together. And voila, we have the collage gather top. And um, I did also pair just kind of a, a more solid orange linen as well. Yeah, definitely not something that typically you would see in my wardrobe. This is a lot of color for me. But at the same time, I have to say that planning the colors for this was probably the funnest part of the project. When you purchase the pattern, you get like a little mock-up and so you can print it out and use like colored pencils or you can also do it digitally um, and test different color combinations and see how you'd like to put the shirt together and what kind of mix of fabrics you'd like to do. Um, of course, you could also just do, um, you know, one fabric for the whole thing, although I think that kind of takes away from the point of this one a little bit. Um, it is meant to be kind of a mishmash of fabrics and it's also a really great stash buster as well. Um, so yeah, I just thought that this one was very fun. The linens are all kind of different weights and textures, so that just kind of adds to like the interest of the top. And yeah, I also put on this little label which I thought was very fitting that says, you look cute today. So yeah, I really had a lot of fun making this one and planning it out and um, I have worn it a couple times and um, it's definitely very loud and kind of attention drawing for me but at the same time um, I do love it and I just think it's such a fun and um, really cute top for summer. So, And next we have the uh, Cornell shirt. This is, oops, that's not really showing you much is it? <laughs> Uh, this is the Cornell shirt from Elb Textiles. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't know if it's Elb or LB. I think it's Elb. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is their Cornell shirt. So it's a button down shirt with kind of a relaxed oversized fit. Um, and this is a unisex pattern. So I believe on her website, she uses the men's size chart for this one, um, but you can just go by the bus size. So yeah, this is in a washed linen in black from Blackbird Fabrics. Actually, I think it's the same um, fabric as this one or similar, if not the exact same. And I made this one in a size C. So uh, I just went by my bust measurement. The size chart, like I said, is for men. Um, my bust is about 37 and a half sometimes 37. Um, so the size chart um, had 36 or 38 that I could go by, um, which was the size B or C. So I decided to go with the size C because I did really want a relaxed oversized fit, even though the pattern is like quite oversized already. Yeah, I really like the way that this one fits. Um, I just wanted like a really flowy and relaxed linen button down shirt that I could you know, throw on over top of a tank top or over top of a swimsuit even at the beach. Um, just something like very, yeah, light, relaxed, and uh, easy to wear for the summer. But I really love the details on this pattern. Um, like, it's just finished beautifully. There's a lot of um, steps which I think give you a really good result um, in terms of like, for example, how the collar is attached and how the cuffs are um, first stitch down the sides and then turn so that you get a really crisp seam. Also, I don't think that you need to use a serger or zigzag stitch at all for this one. Everything is finished on the inside. Um, either it's tucked into the cuffs or the collar or the yoke, or it's finished with a French seam. Um, so it's beautifully finished on the inside. I actually ended up skipping the French seams because I was a little bit too lazy. <laughs> so I did just serge um, the side seams and the sleeves. But yeah, if you are someone who appreciates that kind of level of detail and finish in your makes, then I think you would really like this pattern. Also, I forgot to mention I made view B for this one. So I did do the full button band down the front instead of just the, um, there's a view A which has a placket which just goes down to the middle. Um, which, so it's more of like a pull-on um, over the head tunic style top. So yeah, I really love this one. Um, I did just finish it a couple of days ago, so it's not something that I've had a real chance to wear a lot yet, um, but I definitely see this becoming like a very basic staple in my wardrobe. So next we have the Aurelia dress, and this is from Talco Magazine, um, which is like a sewing publication. They do patterns as well as articles in their 
um, magazine. It's a print magazine, um, but you can purchase the sewing patterns separately as digital files online on their website. Um, so you can't really see a lot of this one when I'm holding it up here, but I'll insert some clips of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like. Um, so it's basically just a, I would say kind of like a, not a mini length, but it's definitely a shorter length um, dress with kind of um, a wider boat neck um, and then the sleeves have this cute little pleat detail on them. Um, so it's like a balloon shaped sleeve, but this is different than a lot of the balloon shaped sleeves that I've seen on a lot of patterns. Um, typically those are just gathered. So I really like the way that this one did like box pleats. I thought that it just made it really interesting. Um, and then the cuff is kind of turned in and tacked down and hidden on the inside. So it kind of looks like the sleeves are like floating almost, if I can describe it that way. And it also comes with a tie belt as well. Um, so that just wraps around the center and kind of cinches in the waist if you want it like that, but you can also just wear it on its own. It has inseam pockets, which for me is always a must on any bottoms or dresses or anything that I'm sewing. And I made this one in a size medium based on the size chart. Um, and I think the size fits me well. It's a little bit snug around the hip area, so if I did end up making this one again in the future, I'd probably add a little bit of fabric there, um, just so it's a little bit easier for me to move around in. And I would also probably lengthen the skirt as well, just because, um, yeah, it's just a little bit short for me. It hits above my knee, and I think I prefer just for like feeling comfortable moving around a lot and like sitting and stuff, uh, I prefer kind of more knee length, um, but totally up to personal preference. If you like the shorter skirt, then um, I would just leave it as is. This fabric, I'm just in love with the color. So this is washed linen, again, from Blackbird Fabrics, which is probably the fabric that I've made like more than half of my clothes in. Um, it's a very like lightweight, soft linen. Um, it's just beautiful and I'm obsessed. And this is the color Celery, which is a new colorway that I think um, they brought in this year. I hadn't ever seen it on their website before. So yeah, it's just like a very lovely, soft kind of pale green color. I had this idea of this dress in my mind actually before I even saw this pattern. And I was originally planning on hacking the Anna Ellen Anthea dress into a dress like this. So that one was very close actually, um, except the puff sleeves are sewn onto the bodice and have a puff at the shoulder seam as well as at the bottom. Um, or at the cuff. And then it also has a button stand down the front, which I wanted to eliminate. But that one I think would have been a little bit tricky because if I eliminated the button stand and the closure at the front, I'd probably also have to widen the neckline so I could get it over my head. So yeah, that would have been a little bit more work, I guess. Um, and then I came across this pattern on Instagram and thought that this one was perfect and exactly suited my vision for what I wanted to make. So yeah, I think this is a really beautiful dress. It's something that I would definitely wear out to like dinner or drinks on a patio somewhere or, you know, just for date night or something like a little bit more special where I want to feel dressed up um, or definitely something I would take with me like on vacation. It pairs well, I think, with like a pair of heels or just casual sandals um, if you want to kind of dress it down a little bit. And as a bonus, I think that this one would actually work really well as like a Tinkerbell costume for Halloween. So. <laughs> Um, I always have this one in my back pocket if I quickly need a costume. So yeah, that is that one. Okay, and the last thing I have made for summer was actually a swimsuit. So this is the Faye swimsuit by Closet Court Patterns, and I've made this in a black recycled trico. Um, is that how you say that? Trico? Okay, I just looked it up and apparently it is trico. Although if you google how to pronounce this word and then just use their like base pronunciation thing that comes up, it tells you tricot. So <laughs> I'm not really sure what's correct, but I think it's trico. Anyway, um, yes, this is the face swimsuit from Closet Court Patterns, and this was actually my first swimsuit that I've ever made, although I think I do have like slight, maybe repressed traumatic memories of trying to make a white bikini in high school from a big four pattern. It did not go well. So <laughs> years later, this is another attempt. Um, and yeah, because I haven't really sewn swimmer before, I just consider this like absolute beginner territory for me. Yeah, this was difficult, I would say for sure. I had a few issues with it, which if you follow me on Instagram and saw my stories, um, you can go back and watch them in my stories highlight on this pattern. You'll definitely see that I made some mistakes and also just had some, I think just like issues with putting this one together. Um, one of the things that I did differently from the pattern was I used one quarter inch swim elastic instead of three eighths of an inch elastic. 
And I think that kind of threw everything off a little bit. Um, I think working with a wider elastic probably would have been a bit easier and a little bit more stable. The quarter inch elastic was very finicky and I did use my serger to attach it the entire way around and I just found it very hard to control um, in my serger. If I was sewing with the uh, fabric underneath and then the elastic on top in order to kind of see what I was doing, um, the fabric would kind of get pulled one way and then the elastic would get pulled the other way. So it was constantly a battle of trying to keep the elastic in line with the edge of the fabric. So yeah, it, it was difficult. I think next time I might try just using the zigzag stitch on my sewing machine instead of trying to use my serger for everything. Other than that, I think the only issue is really just the sizing on the elastic um, in terms of the actual length of it. Um, especially on the bottoms around the bum area, the bottoms do tend to kind of roll out on the bum a little bit. And it's fine if I'm just kind of like standing up and wearing it. I have worn this to the beach already and it was totally fine. But if I like sit down or crouch or something like that um, and the fabric kind of bends, then I do notice that this turns outwards. And um, the biggest issue is that I used white swim elastic because I couldn't find black. If I had used black elastic, then it probably wouldn't have been such a big deal. Um, but someone on Instagram did message me and kind of give me some tips on how to do the swimwear elastic. And she said that typically what you want to do is stretch it more in the back and then have it laying more flat in the front of the bottom. Um, so I think next time I might give that a shot and see if that kind of helps this part on the back um, kind of hug my body a little bit more. Other than that, the bottoms are quite high. So this is the high rise bottom. I made view A of this pattern. So it's the high rise bottoms with just the regular tank top. Yeah, they do come up quite high. I think they cover my belly button. So I think what I might do if I made this one again is just take maybe an inch off of the top of the high waist bottoms. But I do prefer a high waist fit in my bikinis these days just because I feel like it kind of gives a really flattering shape and I just like the way that they look. So <laughs> that's just kind of my personal preference. Also, I made this one in a size 12, which is what the body measurement chart put me at. I found that it actually fits me very well. The only thing that I would change, like I said, is the length of the elastic and, but I think the size of the actual fabric pieces um, is perfect for my size. So if you are looking to make this pattern, then I would definitely just go by their recommendation on the body size chart. They do have some finished garment measurements, but there was no like width garment measurements, which I found kind of strange. Um, it was all just like, I think crotch depth and crotch length. Um, and there was no finished measurements for the top. Um, it was just for the bottom. So yeah, I was a little bit lost there. I was kind of hoping that I could get the finished measurements to compare it to a swimsuit that's similar that I already have, um, but that wasn't really included in the pattern. So in the end, it all worked out, I think. Um, I definitely learned a lot for the next time that I make a swimsuit. One thing that I forgot to mention actually is I did try using a twin needle on my sewing machine for the first time to do the edge stitching instead of stitching with a zigzag. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. So that's what it looks like. Um, and that was a really nice finish as well. I don't really like when uh, my knitwear is finished with a zigzag. I just don't think it looks as professional. Um, even though when you're wearing something like this, especially in a dark color with matching thread, it's not like you can really tell. Um, but yeah, I just prefer kind of like a more professional finish and I thought that the twin needle, yeah, just did that really well. And it was like magic, like you just put the twin needle into your machine, thread two threads through your machine the exact way that you would thread one thread, and it just works. <laughs> I don't know how, I have no idea. Uh, in my brain how it manages to make stitches like this. Um, but yeah, it's just really easy to do and something if you're new to knitwear or intimidated by knitwear, then um, a twin needle makes it super easy and approachable. So yeah, I would highly recommend trying that out if you haven't already. Okay, so that is everything that I have made so far this summer and now let's shift and take a look at what's on my to make list. Um, so these are just some patterns that I've kind of had floating around in my brain for a little while. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up making all of them, um, but yeah, just things that I've kind of been interested in and have been thinking of making. And also just things that I think would be really good for the fabric that I already have in my stash. I'm trying really hard not to purchase new fabric for my makes and just go through what I have because I have a lot of fabric in my stash that I need to go through. 
Um, so yeah, these are things that I kind of had planned for a while. The first one is the Coeli blouse, I think is how it, it's called, um, from Pauline Alice Patterns. And this is kind of like a loose, almost like smock top. Um, so it has a like top part here and then it's gathered from about here down. Um, and it has like a more voluminous sleeve with a wi really wide cuff um, and then some tucks on the sleeve as well. And then it ties up in the back with a couple of ties. So this to me is just like a really pretty like, yeah, like floaty and very feminine and romantic top, which I think would be really cute for summer. Um, and I've had this one on my list for a while. I've got some, um, I think it's like sand washed cotton in my stash, which I think would be really good for this. The one that she's got on the website is kind of like a sheer material, which is really pretty. So I think something like that would work really well as well. But then I did see that Vivian Xiao Chen just released a new pattern as well, um, or is releasing it soon. It probably will be released by the time this video goes live, which is actually quite similar in design to this one. Um, and I've made a couple of Vivian's patterns before. I've made her bisque trousers and the Lawrence top, and I really like her patterns. So yeah, I'm not sure which one I'll end up making, but uh, a blouse kind of along those lines is something that I've just kind of had in the periphery for a while. And uh, yeah, I've already got the fabric to make it. So, so that is project number one. Um, number two is actually two patterns which kind of go together, um, and these are also both from Talco magazine. Um, so the first one is the Anelma dress, and then the second one is the Fritha trousers, or Fritha trousers maybe? So let's see what it says. The Anelma dress is a loosely fitted maxi dress with gathered sleeves. All details matter, and this garment features as little cutting waist as possible, which is a big thing for me, as you know, I hate wasting fabric and I have about three buckets of fabric scraps stashed in my closet, so <laughs> that's always a nice bonus for me when I see that on a pattern. You can combine Fanny's two designs, the Anelma dress and the Fritha trousers, to create a complete look with mono materials. So the Fritha trousers, or Fritha trousers, which are by the same designer, are a voluminous maxi trouser with a gathered waistline and side pockets. And I think it's meant to be worn as a set. Um, if you look at the dress pattern on the website, I believe she is wearing like matching Fritha trousers underneath the dress. But obviously they look really cute and pretty on their own as well. I think you could absolutely just wear the dress on its own or just wear the trousers with a different top. But for some reason, I just really got drawn to this pattern. I just like all of the details. Um, like it's a very long dress. I like the ribbon ties at the wrist. I like how the sleeve is like very puffed up and voluminous. Um, that just seems to be like the trend these days, like everything has puff sleeves, so. Uh, and it's definitely something that I like as well. I think uh, it's a really beautiful detail and just adds like a lot of interest to what would otherwise be a regular dress. And then the pants, um, just to be honest with you, look extremely comfortable. <laughs> they are very wide, um, like definitely a maxi style pant. Yeah, I can just imagine like wearing these all the time, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And also this pattern is something that I don't really have anything like in my wardrobe, like something that's this voluminous, I definitely don't have in a style of pants. So it'd be nice to kind of branch out from my typical pants shape, which is usually like a tapered trouser or, you know, maybe something with a little bit more room into something that's like very wide leg. And yeah, it just has a lot of, um, volume to it. So I would love to make this set in a matching linen um, and I just really like on the website for the dress pattern I think she's got it in like a white linen or a cotton for both pieces and I just think that that looks really beautiful um, but I haven't really quite decided yet and yeah this set would obviously take a lot of fabric because it is a maxi length dress and then a very wide pair of trousers um, so I'm not sure if I have anything in my stash that would actually cover both of these pieces in order to make a matching set. So I might end up just making the dress in like a white color and then maybe doing the pants in like a darker color. I have some navy linen in my stash, which I actually think would look very nice for these. Um, then it wouldn't be as much of a set that you would wear together, but I still think um, individually the pieces would look really nice. So we'll see if I end up making this one. Um, it's not very high on my priority list. Um, it's something that I think I definitely don't need to have in my closet, but it's definitely just something that's like a want. I just think both of these patterns are really beautiful pieces. Um, so yeah, I think if I don't get to making them this summer, then I might just, you know, 
bump them to another season and eventually make them down the road. But yeah, if you haven't heard of Taco Magazine um, and haven't had a look at their patterns, I would definitely uh, recommend going to their website because they have a lot of um, you know, independent designers who they're showcasing from around the world um, and some really interesting and unique designs. So yeah, very much worth checking out. So next is a project that I actually think I would probably have to self-draft, um, which I'm excited about because now that I kind of have the skill set to be able to draft patterns, at least for myself at the moment, this does seem like something that I actually could approach and figure out, uh, whereas before I would have no idea where to even start with something like this and would probably end up, you know, trying to hack together a bunch of different patterns <laughs> to try and get the result that I'm looking for. But this is something that I actually saw in a YouTube video from a YouTuber named Eugenia Diaz, um, who I recently came across and absolutely love her content. Um, it's the exact kind of content that I love watching on YouTube. Very relaxing, very peaceful, very calming, very um, like pastoral, <laughs> um, and yeah, just very inspiring. So. Basically, her and her partner uh, moved to Portugal, I believe, and purchased a plot of land and built a tiny house as well as an art studio on it. And they have a beautiful garden where she grows um, delicious food and then shows what she makes with it. So yeah, I think her channel is growing quite quickly now. Um, it was recommended to me on YouTube and, and it's very well deserved because the filmography on its own is just beautiful, um, but also the content itself is is just so pleasant to watch um, and I really enjoy it. So in one of her videos she's wearing this really gorgeous like long maxi kind of like shirt dress. Um, it has a yoke at the shoulders, um, it's buttoned down the front with a collar, and then the bodice pieces are gathered in the front and in the back. Uh, it has a dropped shoulder and then kind of a gathered sleeve at the cuff. Yeah, I just think that this piece is so beautiful. Um, it just looks so like, I don't know, like she's in a fairy tale or something when she's walking around her garden wearing this dress and picking all these fresh vegetables and then making something delicious out of it. Like that's the life that I want. So yeah, I, I'm gonna try and replicate that as much as possible by just making the same dress that she's wearing and pretending that that's my life too. But no, I, I think that this dress is really beautiful. It's something that's definitely up my style alley and something that I would probably get a lot of wear out of. Yeah, the process I think will be a little bit longer because uh, once I make the pattern, I then have to test it and then make the final version. So it's not as quick as obviously having a ready-made pattern, but at the same time, um, there's so many possibilities when it comes to making your own patterns. You can make them absolutely however you want. You can add whatever kind of details you want. You can um, change the fit of things, change the style lines. Um, it really is an amazing skill to be able to incorporate into your own makes. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to attempting this one and seeing how it turns out. So I'll definitely keep you posted. But in the meantime, I definitely recommend going and checking out her channel if you enjoy kind of peaceful, um, you know, simple and slow living uh, videos like that because yeah, her content is just beautiful. Okay, and the last thing that I am planning to make this summer is actually some underpants and bralettes using some of my scrap linen fabric. Um, so I was actually browsing Etsy recently and I came across these really pretty linen um, bralettes and then underpants as well, like little sets, and my mind was kind of blown because <laughs> Typically when I think about making underwear, you're using knit fabric and stretchy fabric so that it can conform to the contours of your body, um, but I had never really thought about using linen to make that kind of stuff, and then the idea of having an entirely linen outfit, including underpants and whatever layers I'm wearing on the top, um, is just so appealing to me because we all know how much I love linen. And yeah, it's also a great way for me to go through a lot of the scraps that I have in my closet um, because I do have some like pretty fair sized linen remnants, but yeah, it just wouldn't be big enough for like an actual full project, but it might fit into a little bralette or a little um, pair of panties. Also, someone did comment on one of my recent videos and point me to a really good 
um, project for scraps, which is a poof. Um, so you can sew the entire outside of the poof and then just stuff it with all of your scraps. And I think it was from Closet Core Patterns, and I think it's probably a free pattern. Um, I'll double check that, but either way it will be linked in the description box below if you want to go check it out. Um, so for a lot of like the really small scraps that I have, which are just like little pieces of linen or whatever fabric I have um, used in the past, um, that's something that I could use those for, but then for the kind of larger sizes of remnants, um, yeah, I had just been trying to figure out what to do with those, and so I think trying to make some like pretty linen lingerie um, is something that I would love to attempt. However, <laughs> the issue is that I can't actually find any patterns that are for woven fabrics um, for underwear. And uh, the example that I was looking at on Etsy, um, they've just kind of sewn like a pair of panties uh, in a size that would fit up over your hips and then used elastic to kind of draw it in. So it's very like gathered. Um, there's a little bit of volume in places that maybe some people might <laughs> find a little weird, like, but at the same time, like, I think that they actually look quite pretty, um, and yeah, just really cute. So I'm thinking it's something that I'm gonna have to probably draft myself as well, although that doesn't seem quite as close to my current skill set. Um, but who knows, it actually might not be that difficult. Uh, it might just be a case of, you know, measuring my hips and just making sure that the top of the panty um, is big enough to like stretch over those just like a pair of um, elastic waist pants. And then yeah, trying to figure out the bralette as well I think is quite difficult um, just because there's so many small like little fiddly pieces and then um, I wanted to make it so that the elastic for the bralette doesn't go the whole way around the body, it just goes around the back. Um, so trying to find a way to do like a halfway elastic, I've never done that before. Yeah, so that's just something that I've kind of been thinking about and would love to use some of my scraps for. Um, if anyone knows of any like tips or patterns that do use woven fabrics to make lingerie, um, I would love to see them. So definitely comment those below um, if you do know of any and would be happy to share. I'd love to hear them. But otherwise it might just be kind of a DIY thing where I just try to figure it out. <laughs> okay, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is actually my current knitting project. Um, ah, I almost dropped the arm off. So I'm currently working on a sweater um, and knitting this in wool, which is kind of weird for summer, I know. Um, I've been watching a lot of Jenna Phipps channel lately. Actually, I love her content and she's just really bubbly and funny. Um, but she says that summer is crochet season, uh, which makes a lot of sense to me because typically when you think about like crochet clothing, like yeah, you do see a lot of it in summer. You don't see a lot of wool sweaters, <laughs> um, but I don't know how to crochet. And to be honest, I'm not as into the look of crochet as I am into the look of knitwear. And at the same time, I just love having a knit project to work on. Yeah, it's just something that I kind of use to like wind down in the evenings, like when I'm done work for the day, after dinner, maybe just put on a show and then work away at some knitting. Um, it's just, yeah, really like therapeutic and um, calming and kind of a peaceful activity for me. Um, so I recently cast on uh, this sweater. This is the town sweater from Ozetta. And I have made this once before um, in like a lilac wool, but I wasn't super happy with the result for that one. It was one of my like earlier knitwear makes and um, I hadn't quite figured out like my tension and sizing yet. Um, I've realized since then that I'm a really tight knitter, so typically what I need to do is either size up in the pattern or size up in my needles. And one thing that I never used to do before was make a test swatch or like a test gauge. Um, so that's something that I do now, but I just know um, based on my knitting style that I typically need to size up one way or the other. So uh, I'm trying this pattern again and um, I actually ended up sizing up twice in the pattern for this one. Uh, I would have sized up in the needles, but the problem is with the wool that I'm using, um, it didn't look as nice in the larger needles when I made the swatch. Um, so I'm using size US 8 or 5mm needles. Um, and the nine was just too big. It was leaving like too much of a gap. So I wasn't really happy with that. So when I previously made the pattern, I made a size large and I ended up with a sweater that was roughly the proportions of the size medium on the chart. And I actually want the sweater to be 
to end up being a size extra large um, with those measurements because I want it to be like really oversized. Um, I'm actually adding some pockets onto the front and trying to replicate um, a Baba sweater. So I'll post the photo that I'm using for inspiration um, somewhere on the screen here. So yeah, I'm trying to get like more of a relaxed fit. So I'm hoping that by sizing up twice to a size 2XL um, and using the proper size of needles per the pattern, I'm gonna end up with a size XL sweater, if that makes sense. So yeah, I cast this on maybe like two weeks ago. This is the progress that I'm at so far. Um, it's a sweater that's worked from the bottom up in the round and then you split off for the sleeves. So this is definitely the part that just takes the longest. It's just never ending stocking stitch. Um, and each row, I guess, in the round or each round has, I think like 230 or so stitches. So yeah, it's just, it's a long process. Um, I'm definitely not a fast knitter. I can maybe do one project per season. Um, if that, I think lately I've been averaging maybe like three projects per year, but one of those was maybe like a hat, which is a lot faster of a project obviously than a sweater. So yeah, I'm definitely not trying to rush through this one, but I thought that I would share because um, that's also just something that I'm working on on the side. And yeah, even though this is made out of wool, I do think that it could still work in a season like summer. Um, or spring when it's warmer out, um, but then cooler in the evenings. Uh, and yeah, I definitely think that this will still be a really great transitional piece um, for fall as well, and something that I could just wear year round, honestly. So that is it for all of my summer sewing and knitting projects and plans. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more in the future, and also give this video a like because that helps out my channel a lot and it lets me know that you'd like to see similar videos to this in the future. Everything that I chatted about today will be linked in the description box below, so check there. Otherwise, if you have any questions or just general comments, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!